What if simply by taking a voltage measurement, by simply applying these probes to a circuit, you altered the circuit and caused it to either function abnormally or fail entirely? That's something that can happen, and when it does, we call it meter loading. And we're going to take a look at that today. We are going to be taking a look at five slides. The first one should pop up on the screen behind me, and you'll see I've got a voltmeter connected to a circuit. I've got a power source on the right-hand side connected to sensitive stuff, some sort of a sensitive electronics, and then our meter is connected to that so we can take a voltage measurement to the power coming into the circuit. And what I want you to notice about that is we are actually connecting in parallel with that circuit when we apply the voltmeter to the circuit. And in doing so, we may alter the circuit. And the next slide that will pop up will be a drawing that I put together showing a circuit example, just a, a one that I kind of invented. And if you look at the circuit drawn in there, you'll see I have 150 volts supplied from a battery, and I have two resistors connected in series. Both of them are 10K. And looking over to the right, you'll see I have a box showing the resistance, and R total is equal to R1 plus R2, so R is equal to 10K plus 10K, which will yield us 20 kilo ohms of resistance. And then below that, you'll see if we want to find the current, we simply divide E times R, so 150 volts divided by 20,000 ohms will give us 0 0.0075 amps, which is basically 7.5 milliamps. And then when you look further, we can determine each voltage across the resistor. And you can see if we do E equals I times R, if we take E is equal to uh, zero point, excuse me, point zero zero seven five times 1,000 at each of these resistors, we should have a voltage drop of 75 volts on each resistor. That will be under normal conditions. In a moment, we'll pop up another slide and we'll see what happens when we put a meter on the circuit. Okay, and looking at the third slide, you will see on the left, I'm showing our normal, normal circuit as we described it in the previous slide, and I have 75 volts dropped across each of my 10K resistors. On the next drawing to the right, you'll see I applied a voltage meter to take a voltage measurement across the second resistor. And this meter, I'm going to say, has a 10,000 ohm or a 10K ohm input on the meter. And because of that, it's going to draw a certain amount of current. And if you do, we won't do all the math, but if you look up above, I'm showing the total resistance in the circuit now drops to 15,000 ohms, and the total current increases to uh, 0.01 amps because we have altered the amount of resistance on the circuit. We've provided another path for current when we put the meter in place. And so you can see on the very first circuit, we had 0.0075 amps of current draw. On this circuit now, we are drawing 0.0. Zero 01. And I, in other words, we went from 7 uh, milliamps basically to 10 milliamps. So we, we altered the circuit simply by putting the meter on there because of its impedance, its low impedance, you could say. And so now we have the meter draws 0 0.005 amps, and our resistor, uh, uh, the second resistor, is drawing the same 0 0.005 amps. And now if you take a look at what happens because of our current change, we now have 100 volts dropped across the first resistor, and the second one sees a 50 volt drop, and that it's radically different from what we had on normal circuit operation, and additionally, we have changed the milliamp load on the circuit. On this slide now, I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, 4 to 20 milliamp process control circuits, and you can read along with me. It says on, on here, a 4 to 20 milliamp process control circuits, the simple act of taking a voltage measurement where a meter, where meter loading is incurred may signal a dramatic and uncalled for change in the control signals and ultimately alter or harm the process. And I have an example of that. I don't have the actual circuit, but when I was instructing a class, we were trying to set up a lab for apprentices, and what we wanted is we had a proximity sensor here, we had a plate here, and we wanted to make it so that as the plate moved closer, the, a light that was controlled by it got brighter and brighter and brighter. The closer we got it, as we withdrew it, it dimmed. And it worked pretty fine. Uh, but one day, one of the other instructors wanted to take a voltage measurement, and we were on a, a really high, bright intensity. He took a voltage measurement, and instantly, 
the, the circuit changed and the light dimmed just by taking a voltage measurement. That's a perfect example of what we're talking about. And here in a minute, we're going to take a look at a very common circuit and I will show you how meter loading can work on a really simple circuit. And then finally, one more slide to look at. If you see on your screen now, you'll see I have, I'm showing a high impedance input and to minimize unintentional loading effects on circuits under test and to maximize accuracy, Digital multimeters use high impedance input, sometimes greater than one mega ohm. And so that's what happened. It used to be very common, test instruments would be somewhere around 10,000 ohms on their input, but now they are one mega ohm or greater, so we don't impact the circuit. We've got a little tighter shot here. Eventually we're going to take a voltage measurement on this GFCI receptacle, and I'm going to show you the impact of, of voltmeter loading with that. But before we do, I wanna talk about receptacles in general. And both of these receptacles are 120 volt receptacles, this one and that one, and they lay out the same. If you, if they, you look at them and they're wired properly, you will notice you'll have the little slot over here. That should be the black or the ungrounded conductor, sometimes called the, the hot wire. And that's connected to what is basically a brass screw here. And on the larger slot, that's the neutral or the grounded conductor, the white wire, and that's connected to a silver screw. And uh, all receptacles, if they're wired properly, should be that way. And then the equipment ground is connected here to the strap. In this case, it's a bare wire on that. And as far as a GFCI receptacle, the way they work, they monitor between the, the ungrounded conductor and the grounded conductor, the hot and the neutral wire, and they look for an imbalance. And so there's a sensor inside the GFCI that's basically monitoring these two wires, and if it sees an imbalance, in other words, if the black wire had one ampere on it, you need to have close to one ampere on the white wire or it trips. And in the case of these GFCIs, they will trip if there is an imbalance of four to six milliamps. So it's very, very sensitive. So you have to have the same amount of current on both wires. And if there is not, the GFCI assumes there is a ground fault or wire, or excuse me, current leaking on the ground, and it will trip and interrupt the circuit. On a GFCI, the equipment ground does not, be, not need to be there to carry the, the ground fault current. It really looks for the imbalance on the black and the white wire. I have one more little detail I would like to talk about before we take our voltage measurement. I have before me a standard receptacle, and the interesting thing to note about that is you can put just one probe in one side before you insert the other probe. And that's really not a very good practice in my way of thinking, and one of the reasons that is, if I did just like this, and this was a hot receptacle, if I put this probe in here like this, I'm connected to the hot or the ungrounded conductor, this lead is free and I could actually have a difference in potential and receive a shock just by touching this in because I've connected the hot wire here. So really the proper way I believe to test the receptacle is to use one hand if you can and insert both probes at once when you take a voltage measurement. And you, you can see this particular meter has finger guards too, which keeps you from actually sl slipping off and accessing the live voltage. So that's really what I consider the best way to take a voltage measurement. That being said, um, the new type of, the newer, one of the newer type of receptacles is a tamper resistant receptacle like this, and it will not allow you to use just one side. You can't insert it in one side you actually have to have both sides or it won't open up the little windows. You have to have both of them. So it kind of ends that argument. But the reason I'm telling you this is because I'm going to take measurements using only one probe when I do the voltage test on my GFCI receptacle, receptacle just for illustration purposes. And I wanted to make sure you understand that's not really the proper way to take a voltage measurement. There is some debate as to whether taking a voltage measurement on a receptacle like this and doing it properly is any sort of a, a problem if, it, if it's actually hazardous in any way and whether NFPA 70E standard for electrical safety in the workplace is, is governing how you should do that. Uh, in the case that we're going to be doing here where I'm going to take the measurement, because of the way I'm doing it, I am going to wear an a, a arc rated shirt. I'm going to wear 
gloves and safety glasses. And this is not really a circuit that has a lot of arc flash potential, but I'm going to do it anyway just for the sake of safety. And so I just wanted to clarify that before we get started. Okay, we have tightened up entirely on our 120 volt receptacle. As you can see, I have a voltage indicator that I have connected to one side of the receptacle so we can see that the circuit is working. It is lighted right now and the circuit's live. And you can also see there's an indicating LED here that tells you if the circuit is functioning. And I'm going to first take a voltage measurement uh, across the, from the neutral to the, the hot using this uh, Voltcon ideal Wiggy, we call it. It's a solenoid type tester. And I'll start there and just see if we get a measurement on that. And so I'll put it in the neutral position first. And then, uh, because that, that's not really a shock hazard if it's wired properly. And then I will go to the hot side. And I don't know if you can hear it very well, but it's making a tone. And it's also telling me that I'm 120-ish volts. So I will draw that. And the next thing I want to do is take a measurement to ground. And I'll, I, will, I will apply to the grounded side first because there should be no voltage present there. And then I will go to the, the smaller or the ungrounded slot and let's see if we get a measurement. And this is, the screw is a grounded body through the strap, so it, it should be a perfectly good ground. And when I do that, we trip the circuit. It was actually meter loading. What happened is this is a low impedance input on this voltmeter, and so it ended up drawing more than four to six milliamps, and it tripped the circuit, and so it impacted the circuit, which is really what voltmeter, or excuse me, uh, uh, voltmeter loading does. We've now introduced another meter in here. We've got the Fluke 117, and it's a really interesting meter because it has both a high impedance input for voltage measurements and a low impedance input. And we're going to use both, and you'll see what happens. Uh, right now, I am set for reading voltage in auto range, which, which puts it into the high impedance input mode. So let's take a measurement of our voltage here, and you can see we're working, our indicator's working here, saying we have a live circuit. And I'll try to do this with one hand like I recommend, if I can. And we have 121.7 volts. Now I'm going to try to do another measurement to ground. And it's the same thing, this screw is a grounded body, so I should be able to get a measurement between that and the hot wire. And I do, it's 121.7. So uh, we were able to take a measurement to ground on this case. Now I'm going to switch to the low impedance input, and that's over here in this position. And now I went to the low impedance instead of the high impedance, and we'll take a measurement of the, the circuit again under normal conditions. Oops, you can set up a little bit better here. And we have, let's go here. 121.5 volts on that. That worked out fine. And now we'll try to measurement to the ground again. So I'll start measure, put the probe on ground first, and then go to the ungrounded conductor. And you'll notice the light went out, we tripped the circuit. That's because the low impedance drew enough current, it impacted the circuit and tripped it out. And that's exactly what meter loading is. In order to solve that problem, we started making devices with high impedance input, but that created another problem called ghost voltage. In our next lab, we'll talk, take a look at that. Thank you so much for watching our video on meter loading. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, when I was an apprentice is the first time I ran into that, and I didn't understand why sometimes I could take a measurement to ground on a GFCI receptacle, and sometimes I couldn't and I didn't realize it was the difference between the two meters. So as I mentioned previously in our next video, we're going to take a look at ghost voltage, which is another really interesting problem, and it's a, it's a pretty fun lab to go through.